This week's Slutty Science builds on the Slutty Science of episode 2, 5, and 6 of season 2, as well as last week's episode. Last week, we took a closer look at testosterone therapy in the transitional process of transmasculine and non-binary people. Today, we are looking into some of the different kinds of gender-affirmative medical procedures which are available for transmasculine and non-binary people. Firstly, there is transmasculine top surgery, also called a mastectomy, but usually referred to as top surgery. This medical procedure refers to removing the breast tissue from both breasts and creating a masculine appearance to the chest. Then there is transmasculine bottom surgery aimed to transform the female genitalia and reconstruct it into that of a male. In other words, exchanging your vagina for a dick. There are two different types of bottom surgery, metoidioplasty and phalloplasty, and trust me, sit down for this one because it's about to get real complicated. When a trans person assigned female at birth begins using testosterone, bottom growth occurs. This refers to the enlargement of the clitoris as a result of using testosterone. During a metoidioplasty, the clitoral ligaments, which is a difficult word for connective tissue, are detached, which allows the clitoris to lengthen and drop into a position similar to that of a cis man's penis. A plastic surgeon then proceeds to sculpt the head of the clitoris in a way which more closely resembles the head of a cis dick. The neophallus, aka dick created with this method, is on average anywhere between 5 and 7 centimeters long. Additionally to this procedure, the labia can be reshaped into a scrotum, either with or without testicular prosthesis. This is called a scrotoplasty. Metoidioplasty can be done with or without urethral lengthening procedures. Urethral lengthening extends the urethra along the new phallus. This is called urethroplasty and enables transmasculine individuals to urinate from their new cock, which forms a major reason why people choose to undergo transmasculine gender-affirming genital surgery. However, urethral lengthening increases the risk of surgical complications. These complications can include dribbling or spraying during urination, urinary blockages or a leak or rupture even of the lengthened urethra. Metoidioplasty is usually considered to be a single-stage surgery. However, some people may require additional surgeries in order to achieve their desired results. Supplementary surgeries can be done to improve either the appearance or function of the neophallus. The other option transmasculine individuals have is phalloplasty. This is the creation of a dick of a similar volume to that in genetic males. During a phalloplasty, tissue which will be used to construct the penis is harvested from another part of the body. Usually this is taken from either upper legs or lower arms. It is then shaped to look like a penis. Thereafter, the tissue is transferred to the pelvis, where the blood vessels and nerves are attached to the recipient's vessels in the pelvis. Additionally, patients can choose for urethroplasty. Phalloplasty is a more complex surgery in comparison to metoidioplasty, as the latter is a single-stage surgery, whereas phalloplasty is a multi-stage procedure which requires multiple surgeries in order to complete the process. Phalloplasty can result in numerous complications. Most of them are relatively minor and fixable. However, since the more recent development of metoidioplasty, phalloplasty has lost its popularity. Perks of a metoidioplasty are the conservation of erotic sensitivity of the clitoris, lower complication rates, risks, and fewer procedures even with urethroplasty. It doesn't result in large scars, it generally heals faster and there is no need for a penis prosthesis as the metoidioplasty dick has a natural erectile function. Perks of a phalloplasty are that patients are more likely to be able to penetrate sexual partners. However, erectile rods are needed to achieve an erection. You do get a significantly bigger dick, but less erogenous sensations. And additionally, it gives you a more cisgender looking dick. For transmasculine individuals who initially choose metoidioplasty, it is later possible to undergo a phalloplasty. 
This is true regardless of whether the person decides to have a urethral lengthening at the time of the procedure. However, the reverse is not true. The procedure for embedding the clitoris in the penis during phalloplasty makes a later metoidioplasty not feasible. Concluding this final week of season 5's slutty science, which was incredibly detailed, complicated, and medical, and not really that slutty, we can state that being born as a trans person is complicated enough on its own. The decisions trans folks have to make about their bodies, the way they choose to present themselves, and their internal struggles are plenty on their own. So how about we, as a society, make it a little easier on them? Ask your friends what their pronouns are. Put them in your Instagram bio. Yes, also if you are a cis person. And educate yourself and those around you about the things unknown to you so that not all the weight rests upon the shoulders of those obliged to carry so much already.